Come on, Sad. This is Ed Lover, man. I'm chilling with my man, Ill Will. And he is the illest hip-hop journalist in the UK. Bar none. For real. Like, he's so ill that he should be knighted. Like, he should be royal. Like, seriously. Like, fuck Harry and him. He should be, like, Ill Will and the Queen and, and, and Charles. Fuck Charles, too. But it just should be Ill Will and the Queen. Like, he's that ill. For real. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Illwell, aka the Boy Wonder. I'm out here in New York with somebody I would call an absolute hip hop icon. And believe it or not, I actually just bumped into him in the lobby yesterday, right? Yeah, yeah, in the lobby of Sirius XM. What's up to Ed Lover? What's going on, bro? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm just, you know, doing what I usually do, working hard. Yeah? Yeah. Loving life? Life is great for me. Yeah. Life is absolutely phenomenal. I hear you picking up those checks. Yeah, the, well, the checks, the, <laughs> the, the checks never stop coming, so that's a good thing. I have to say to you, bro, the, the first time I ever heard your name, and uh, some people, they might be like, really? Was on uh, the MC Hammer joint. Have you seen her? Oh, okay. Really? And, yeah, in uh, 1990. So I was like, I think I was like seven at the time. And okay. then I graduated to Yo MTV Raps. Okay. And I have to say, I miss Yo MTV Raps, man. I'm sure you do too, right? Uh... <laughs> there's a part of me that misses Yom TV raps, and then there's a part of me that doesn't miss Yom TV raps. The part of me that misses Yom TV raps um, misses it because we were so young, and we were so happy to be doing what we were doing, and we were big fans of the music. And it was it was a time when hip hop was really kind of developing. Mm. I mean, and it was the greatest era of hip. It was the greatest ten years of hip hop ever. Uh, I don't think you'll be able to match that 10 years of hip-hop at any time in the future of hip-hop. Right. That was the greatest time, 1990 to 2000, the greatest era of hip-hop ever. Um, that I miss that part of it. Um, I matured, I grew up, I know business better now, so okay. that's why I don't miss it. Because if I knew in 1989, 90, what I know in 2015, I'd be a, a billionaire by now. <laughs> so, you, so you reckon you got jerked? Is that uh, with the I, TV stuff? You think you got jerked? I, I don't think I got jerked. I just don't think that I I took advantage of it the way I should have. Okay. So, if they came now and said they wanted to revamp Yo MTV Raps, you wouldn't do it? No, I would do I would do Retro Yo, where we would show old school videos. But you, I'm not these I'm not these kids anymore. I can't sit there and act like I like something that I don't like so okay. I really don't think they would like the show that much you just leave it to the next generation and let them have their time yeah I, w I will get to talking about the new generation but um, I just wanted to talk about the TV stuff for a little bit as well do you think that music television um, will ever be relevant again to you know what no, we call hip-hop I, I don't think so because I think um, people have so many different outlets where they can get videos and music from so I think that time has come and gone, and I think that uh, it was pretty smart for MTV to branch off into different channels where they have jams and they have, you know, different stations like that where you can see videos all the time. But the main hub of MTV is more of a regular television station. Because once you have a whole lot of uh, premium outlets in different places where you can get it, it doesn't make it special anymore. Okay. So I don't think that music television will ever be what it once was right you well from mtv raps yo mtv raps um and moving forward you've worked with pretty much everybody you've met everybody yeah. um i mean you probably get asked all the time what's some of your favorite memories of, um, of working with people bill cosby is definitely one of my favorites because of the way that happened um mike tyson is another one of my favorites because of what happened and um james brown because james brown is the uh, backbone of hip-hop mm -hmm. so you know b listening to james brown as a kid and then having james brown spend a, a, a week with you on the show was absolutely tremendous for me like that's like meeting an I that's meeting a childhood idol mm -hmm. meeting james brown so and um cosby because he called um mtv looking for me and then when i called back to the cosby show they put me on hold and he picked up the phone and i was like wow and he was like hey this is bill cosby and you know, I was in my office with my daughter, and my daughter is watching this show, and it's called Yo MTV Raps, man. And and I'm looking at this thing, and you were on there, and you had these glasses on with the tape on the side of them, and you were doing this character. And I was like, yeah, the character is called Perry 
J. Periwinkle III, Mr. Cosby. He's like, don't call me Mr. Cosby, please call me Bill. And he was like, man, I was cracking up at that thing. And I remember Eddie Murphy did a routine one time when he said Bill Cosby only calls you for one or two reasons. He only calls you to tell you he either likes what you're doing or he'll call you and tell you he doesn't like what you're doing. So you were worried? So I was, absolutely, <laughs> yeah, when I was on hold, I was scared to death. I thought he was going to tell me I was making a fool out of black people. So um, once I got that stamp of approval from him and he was like, listen, I want you, I'm going to come down there and I want to do your show. And then... Um, I'm going to have you on my show. That was that was really big for me because the Cosby Show was the number one rated show in America at the time. Right. So that was huge to have him on your own TV raps. So with everything that's happened recently with him in the news, I don't want to get into that, but do you still feel the same way about that Absolutely. moment? I, well, you know what? I don't know. I have a, th a conspiracy theory on it. Um, I don't know if something like that actually happened with these women, and I hope that it didn't because I think that's a terrible thing to do to any person at all. But I also noticed that none of these things really started happening to Bill Cosby until he tried to buy NBC. And after he tried right. to buy NBC, then all of a sudden his son mysteriously died, and, and then the next thing you know it's all of these allegations to try to discredit what he brought to American television. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Okay, now, besides uh, the people you've just named as well, you actually got to see some of the biggest the artists who are now some of the biggest artists big, with their beginnings yeah. so like for example Jay-Z as well because uh, he came through with Big Daddy Kane right? He came, through, well, he came through one time actually with Jazzo right when um Jazz was doing when Jazz was doing Hawaiian Sophie and that Jay-Z at that time flow was a lot different than the Jay-Z that we know now it was very Big L like. it was very uh, the Jigga the J the Jigga mm. the A the Jigga the yeah it was very fast rap type of thing and then you know, he slowed it down. So Jay is cool. Me and Jay have been cool for a long time. So that that must be up there as one of your, you saw the birth of yeah, an icon. Yeah, the birth of Jay, the birth of Biggie, the birth of Pac. I knew Pac when he was a roadie for Digital Underground. That was going to be my next question. That was that was like, I don't, I don't think of Tupac in the same way people think of Tupac. Like the majority of people that didn't know Tupac think of Tupac as some kind of, of icon, iconic figure in hip-hop. I think of him as my friend Tupac that used to be in my mother's kitchen eating potato salad and hanging out with Naughty by Nature in East Orange, New Jersey, and getting on a train and going to the Apollo and that kind of stuff I remember the most. About. I bet you have some serious stories about Pac. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I had to bail Tupac out of jail in Atlanta, what? Georgia. Oh, yeah. when he showed the cops? Nah, that oh, was no, because he didn't get we to prison, got, right? We got kicked out of Magic City one night. But I wasn't there when he shot when he had to shoot out with the cops. But we were down for Jack the Rapper, and um, we had a like a, a I think it was really kind of like the beginning of day parties. The conventions used to labels used to throw parties in the daytime. We up on a roof, and I got all their weed, and they got smoking all of this weed. And security kept telling them, "Hey, listen, put the weed out. You can't smoke up here." And he's telling, hey, fuck "It wasn't a puff here. party then." No, fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. Cursing the security out. We wild and I'm like, yo, they're gonna call the cops. So y'all <laughs> give me all the weed and I took all the weed and I took all the blunts and I gave them the Nikki D to hold. So when the cops come if they pat us down, we don't have any weed. The cops did come, pat Tupac down, he had like a half a blunt, pew, carted him and my man Madge off to jail and I had to go get him. Damn. That is a story. Yeah. As far as you I mean I hope you don't take this term. Some people don't like it. I know Q tip doesn't like being called an OG, but you're an OG, like in hip hop. I don't, I, I, I don't understand why Q-Tip doesn't like being called an OG. I, I'm not I so. I love Q-Tip, but you got to be an OG depending on where you started your journey. I believe he he was being interviewed by someone from Vibe or Complex, and he didn't like uh, because of the age thing. Because he was saying that Jay Z is <coughs> as old as him. Jay Z's an OG also. Right. We're all OGs. But people don't really call Jay Z an OG. That's because of his financial status. Right, okay. I think. I think Jay Z being on the Forbes list and being the astute businessman that he is separates himself from being called old school. Mm -hmm. But we're all still working and we're all still making a living and um tipping them started well tip started before Jay Z, really but the age thing. Mm -hmm. Tip was Tip was actually in the industry before Jay Z. They may be the same age, but I, I take pride in being called an OG. Matter of fact, I'm a quadruple OG, so I'm handling it. Triple OG? It. Yeah, I'm handling it. Oh, quadruple OG. Quadruple four times. Man. Yeah, I'm handling it. I love it. So my question was is that, you know, you're an OG. You've been doing this for a long time. How on earth have you managed to stay so relevant? Because so many of our favorite artists from that era are struggling, you know? Like, figure out what you know how to do. Do it to the best of your ability and don't miss any opportunity that knocks on the door. The best thing I ever did was, was when... 
my manager at the time, Charles Stetler, came to me and said, they want you to do radio. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, they want you to do more than radio. Mr. Steve Smith from Hot 97 is coming down here to talk to you guys about doing a morning show. And I was like, get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and do radio. <laughs> at the time, we were on MTV, and we basically, unless it was spring break or something else, we basically worked one day a week. We came in Thursdays and shot the whole week's, the whole next week worth of shows and the Saturday show in one day. So I was like, okay, I got the rest of the week to, to do what I want to do, and I'm getting premium bucks for this. I'm not going to do this radio mm -hmm. shit. So he sat down, and he explained to me what Howard Stern made, and he explained to me that sooner or later MTV is going to stop doing your MTV rap, so you better have something else to do. And we jumped into radio and it was the best thing that I ever did the rest is history yeah and, and you and, allowed me to do so many other things and you're very comfortable now you're very good. comfortable I mean what's the end goal with that then in terms of uh, moving forward where do you see yourself well, I'm, ending I'm all, up I'm on all over the damn country and parts of the world right now mm. you know it's just building more building on my brand I'm a stand up comic so I really really enjoy that like that's for me is the most fun thing that I've decided to do within the last five years. Keep building the brand of Come On, Son. Um, you know, just did a deal with Eric Sermon with his death rugs. So the Come On, Son rug will be out there for everybody to buy. Um, just keep building the brand, man, and just enjoying life and, and taking every opportunity. I have an over-the-top 24-hour um, streaming hip-hop network called Hip Hop TV mm -hmm. um, that we just launched at High Road Day this year. Um, it's the first over-the-top 24-hour on all your devices, on your on your box, on your tablet, on your phone. You'll be able to stream hip-hop TV, hip-hop videos, hip-hop content all day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Where can people find that? At hiphoptv.com. You can sign up right now. Perfect. Make sure you go and do that. Yeah. Um, you've just mentioned Come On, Son. Yeah. How, where did that even... It's the most <laughs> organic thing I've ever done in my life, honestly. Dude, I'm going to tell you, right, I go on... Uh, message boards, hip-hop message boards that I'm uh -huh. a member of, and I see memes of your face with the speech bubble, come on, son, and I'm just like, yo, this is where hip-hop's gone. Yeah, absolutely. It was. It's the most organic thing I've ever did. What happened was there had been something going on between um, Young Jeezy, who I absolutely adore as an artist, and, and DJ Drama. And Jeezy had his USDA crew, and he hired Drama to do his party. Now, at the time, Gucci Mane was the hottest rapper in the world. At, the, at that time... And Jeezy got mad at Drama because Drama was playing Gucci Mane records at his party, knowing that Jeezy and Gucci had beef. beef right. right. So that was the thing, and I wanted to talk about it. So I pulled out my laptop, and I was like, you know what? This is like really some stupid shit. So I pulled out my laptop, and I started making a video on my laptop about that and things that were going on in hip-hop. But I didn't know how to Chiron, come on, son, on the screen like they used to do on MTV it used to flash my name, Ed Love, uh, Dr. Right, yeah. Dre. I didn't know how to do that. So I had just moved into my house. I had boxes that were unpacked. I grabbed the top of the box. I wrote, come on, son, on it, and I started flashing it up to, to emphasize my point. I gave it to my friend Money Nails at thisis50.com. They put it up. 75,000 people watched it in two days. And I started reading the comments, and people were cursing me out and calling me old and stupid. And I was like, I can't do this. I, I, I'm not ready to accept all of these neg negativity. And Nelson said to me, motherfucker, they watched it. Fuck mm. what they say. They watched it. Do another one. And that's how it started. So a little dicky bird tells me that you are going to be appearing on an upcoming episode of Off the Boat. Fresh Off the Boat just aired. The season premiere aired this Tuesday that just passed. Right, because yeah. I don't think we have it in the UK yet, or maybe it might be on Netflix, perhaps. But okay. can you tell us a little bit about your role, or are you sworn uh, it's to a secrecy? Cameo. It's a cameo role. Um, I'm playing me. Uh, I appreciate it. Fresh Off the Boat pays very well. So thank you, Fresh Off the Boat. And, um, well, you know, the show is based on the one kid that's pretty much the lead of the show is a real hip-hop head. So it just makes sense that, you know, they make all these references to 90s hip-hop that they would have me on the show. So it's a really, it's a really cute... Funny cameo um, about him um, worrying about having a story when he goes back to school for the seventh grade the next year. I remember that myself. Like, summertime was a big time, and by the time school started, if you didn't want to be put into that category of being corny, you had to come back either with a good story or you just had to be fresh to death. Right. So uh, he gets these Reebok pumps that he'd been saving up all year for, 
and uh, he's watching videos, and I come on the video on his video screen to interrupt the videos to tell him that uh, John Stockton is not wearing Reebok pumps, so they're really corny. John Stockton. Yeah, so he better give them to his uh, to his dad or his white neighbor because those are over. So, um, Is it this season that's airing now or is it next season? It's this season. It was the season premiere. It's on oh, okay. the season premiere episode. Oh, so it's already been on? Yeah, it's been on here in the United uh, States. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll watch out for that one. Now, earlier on, uh, when we were talking about your MTV raps, you mentioned that you're, if they were to revive it, you wouldn't do it because there's a lot of shit out now that you just wouldn't like and people would hate on your opinion. Yeah. Um, is there anything out there now that you are listening to? And what is your, over, yeah. um, and what is your overall opinion of hip-hop right now? It's not as creative as it should be. Not Well... That's hard to say because there are a lot of artists out there that I listen to all the time. Um, mainstream is what I don't think is creative as it should be. But I do understand it. I understand that at this point in my life, everything is not for me. And it's funny because I had this conversation with Jay-Z one time about the uh, Magna Carta album. Right. Um, that I do understand that everything is not for me. And I do understand that there is a place for party music and, and, and a place for turn up music. But it's not Drake, it's not Nicki, it's not Wayne, who I think are very, very talented artists. It's not Future, it's everybody else that's trying to be like them. Right. That's the problem. But there are great hip hop artists out there um, that I really, really like. I mean, there's, you know, you got cats like King Los, and you got mm. you got cats like Logic um, that my son put me on the Logic. You know, I love the whole Funk Volume crew and Hobson, and I love Rhapsody. I think she's one of the illest females out there. She was just in a shoot with Dre yeah, this she's week. She's fucking amazing, yo. Um, you know, what can you say about the whole TDE clique? They're dope. You know, Kendrick's a young dude that's just kind of kicking the door down. J. Cole sold a million records with no features. I love him. I mean, there's great, great hip-hop out there, but that's not the hip-hop that's getting played mainstream radio. And I see this resurgence of lyricism coming back to mm-hmm. hip-hop because J. Cole is running around in the, in the United States of America and um, in Europe and other places, and he's selling out arenas by himself. Yes, so is. that means people want content. So that means if you want to be good, you can be good. And you can move units, and you can sell records, and you can have a fan base. You don't have to follow everything that everyone else is doing. That's my problem with hip-hop. In the 90s, you can point it out. You can be like, that's EPMD, that's Red Man, that's Naughty, that's Tupac, that's Snoop, that's, you know, that's Dub C in the Mad Circle, that's Ice-T, that's Ice Cube, that's De La, and that's Tribe, but they in the same crew, but they don't even sound nothing alike. You know, you can point everybody, that's the Mighty KRS-One, that's Big Daddy Kane. Everybody was individuals. Everybody stood on their own feet. LL would make an album, and it would just be LL on the album. Run DMC would make an album, and it would be just Run DMC. I remember the first time I heard 8 Million Stories with Curtis Blow featuring Run DMC. People didn't do features. Mm. I was like, oh, shit, he got Run DMC on a song? People didn't do features. The Fat Boys did their Fat Boy album. When you bought an album, you got that person. You know, they put their artistry into that album. Then we got to this point now where it's it's not about the art anymore. Well, you can't have an album without a million features. A million now. features, and it's not about the art. It's about what can I say and what can I that's sell? repetitive and what can I sell, and not even sell, but what can I make hot so that I can do club gigs and make money. Right. That's all it's about. There's a, too many subpar artists out there that are getting a shot, and the real artists that really have something to say, that's really studied hip hop, that really loves the the, the language and, and the metaphors and, and everything, those people are getting pushed to the background, and that's the problem that I have with it. A conversation I was having the other day, kind of along those lines, was that I think personally, th- like you say, there's a lot of hip hop there like the good shit and then there's all this other trash that all sounds the same yeah. would it would it be fair to say that the stuff that's out now that is trash it's not even hip hop it should be if they're calling it trap should it's trap it. it's yeah. completely different to yeah. hip hop yeah I think they should categorize it I think they should categorize it the way they do rock and roll music there's heavy metal there's there's you know uh, contemporary mm-hmm. rock and roll there's you know all kind of grunge, there's all kind of rock and roll, and hip-hop should be separated and put into different categories. There's always been pop rap. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's yeah. pop rap. That's cool. That was Hammer, that was Vanilla Ice, that was that's Macklemore, Ryan Diddy. Lewis, that's yeah, Diddy. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing. 
There's nothing wrong with what they're what they're doing, and that's all fine because music is just your own expression. But if it's trap, then it should be called trap hip hop. It's misleading it's to misleading. some people. It's not hip hop. It's it's really not contemporary or conventional hip hop at all. Right. It's really not very good. I but mean, you know what? You can see that, and um, you can see that when it really came down to it. Like when like give you an example, the Meek Mill and Drake beef mm -hmm. and the battle. You could really see that Meek didn't stand a chance because in all honesty, he wasn't that good. Dr he was the hype. It was the hype, but when it really came down to like when you battle somebody, you slow that shit down so everybody can hear exactly what you're saying. He ain't stand a chance. Mm. Cause Drake is really, really good. Like he's really good. But he's making that music for to keep himself hot in the clubs and yep. to keep himself he's the the kid is really, really good. He's clever as well. Yeah, he's really good though. Like I think it's very unfair uh, as well, like with the whole trap thing, it's definitely something we need to separate because if you go on iTunes and you look at hip hop and they make these playlists, there's all this shit that just is not hip hop and it's there and these kids think, you know, they they think that this is hip hop and it's not. Right. Like, that's what I have a problem with. Yeah, yeah. They definitely need to separate it. It should be like it's its own category. Do you think um, you you just mentioned some names? Well, pretty much all the names I was going to mention to you. Um, that all these lyrical cats now. So your Kendricks, your Coles, your Logics, like these these guys are now selling records and being successful and touring. As you say, Cole. I think Cole um, just they just announced something like seventeen million he made from just right. touring recently. Um, do you think that it's ever going to do that 360 and yeah, it's going to be pro and it's going to be prominent again like it's it was happening now right. it's the, the, the ne not this generation not the 20 somethings now them, them 16 17 18s behind them mm. they're pushing that shit out the way that's that's my son and them. my son's a freshman in college that's him and his his boys all they listen to is lyrics right they because those are our kids and we taught them what amazing hip hop is supposed to sound like. So that's oh that's why he can put me on the logic like that. Listen to this kid. Right. You know, that's why, you know, they can put me on to people like the you know, the Flatbush Zombies and Bodega Bands and, and Travis Scott and, and Joey um, Badass Joey Badass and them. Bishop them right. Them dudes are saying something. Mm. And that's what they want to hear. They get tired of this shit. It's good to stand up on the couch on three o'clock in the morning if you're drunk. That's all it's good for. You know what I call it? What? Milk music. Milk music. Milk music. It's like a carton of milk. You put it in the refrigerator, it's only good for a certain period of time, then it spoils, and you pour it out, and you never revisit it. Right. And it's the next carton. I love that. It's milk music. Because I actually, personally, have a problem with the fact that they're even calling it trap music. Because trap music is Jeezy, T.I. Because they right. were selling drugs in the right. trap. And now this electro shit. shit, like, they just don't get right. it. So... Milk music. We need to do a petition or it's something. Milk. That's what we're going to call it, milk music. Milk music, because it's only good for till the, uh, till the expiration date. Man, that's amazing. Well, I'm going to sign off now. I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure. It was, oh a, it was, it was an honor just to bump into you Thanks and for, for you to say that we'd do it. So, signing off from New York, myself, Ed Lover. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. All right, keep God first. <laughs>